this got me into comics. This showed me where to go look for him. It's finally here. I backed this thing on November 1st of 2022. And for those of you who know me, you already know that the 1992 Marvel Masterpieces by Joe Jusco is what got me into comics. Eight-year-old Jem was blown away by these cards. So when the Kickstarter was announced that there was going to be an art book for that very set, I had to jump onto it, into it. One of those things. I'm looking at my shelf. I do have his what is it 2016 or 2018 Marvel masterpiece art book which is a cool book but for me this was the set so I'm gonna do as you can see uh, an unboxing we're gonna look at this for the first time together and I, I think I, I originally backed just like the standard and then I eventually upgraded it to um, the next level now I'll do overhead shots once we open it up and also do overhead shots of what they've already sent they had problems I guess with the shipping or there was a lot of delays so they sent out the perks early so you saw the whole card then they have these metal cards I have two of them are Psylocke one of them says zombie for some reason and of course the spider-man but again we'll look at that when we do the overhead shots this is a little what's in the box type of vibe. All right, okay, so this book, I haven't even been spoiled. I saw a couple of pictures. There's a smaller book here, and I forget which is which. The original painted masterpiece digest. So this is a very small book. We'll take a look at that. And then I'm guessing this is the main book, the creme de la creme. It is a slip case. I love the art on the slipcase. You guys know I have this set framed. It's actually right when you come down the stairs in the basement. Frame set next to the promotional Spider-Man poster. So signed and numbered limited edition. I guess I did get a signed one. I think the more expensive tier was like original art or something like that. I didn't That I didn't go for. All right, let's uh, carefully take off the plastic get wrapped in plastic when it happens that's it go ahead and open it up I love the art on the slip case y'all it reminds me of my frame set so let's take off the plastic on this all right so again slip case again and we'll look at it on the overhead shots very nice slip case and then here is the book itself the iconic Spider-Man cover, the spine, the back. Let's do what we do with the Omnis, y'all, and stretch that spine. Oh, it has a dust jacket, so let's take that off real quick. We're not savages. We'll take a closer look at it. The interior flaps as well. The uh, hardcover is the same. Oh, I like the back, how it has the actual packs. The packs were so classy. The whole masterpiece idea was classy. It had like a marble look to it. So we're going to stretch out the spine. And we're going to get a glimpse of the interiors this way as well. So I'm getting a sneak peek before you guys. Very cool. All right, let's go ahead and put that away. And let's do the plastic on this small little handbook. I think it was like 200 and something dollars was this tier level. Oh yeah, remind me, we gotta check for the signature too. Actually, should I check right now? Oh, he signed it on the pack. I'll show you guys. All right, so this little handbook, we're still gonna stretch the spine for it. Ooh, I love what they did here and I'll explain why. Enough of that, let's go ahead and do the overhead shots. All right, yeah, so FPG is the company that produced this. I did pledge $295, and this is signed and numbered by Joe Jusco, and these are certain perks when it hit certain campaign milestones. The campaign itself did $500,000, so pretty well done on the campaign. What I wanted to do was bring out the size of a regular comic book. This is issue two from the 90s Marvel Masterpieces, uh, comics, which these are great, man. I kind of want to do a whole video on these because it has the largest at the time sizes of these portraits. And it also has uh, interviews by Jusco. I think it's at, yeah, at the back of each of the issues. So we'll, we'll bust this out just kind of like for a comparison. You can see that this smaller little um, 
book right here, smaller than a traditional comic, but then you have the um, the slipcase one is larger in size, but it feels like it's a little bit smaller than an absolute edition. Yeah, so just for comparison for my hardcover collectors, it is smaller than an absolute, but it is larger than a typical comic, so probably more omnibus sized. Actually, let's bring out Godzilla. Yeah, so about the size of an omnibus. I gotta do a video on this still. All right, so first, the perks. So all of the cards that had like the black background to me were always kind of the freshest ones, like the Spider-Man, the Psylocke, the Human Torch, the Hulk. So they gave a metal shiny card as one of the perks. And again, this is what really got me into the masterpieces or into comics as a kid. On the back of the masterpieces would show either their first appearance or first cover appearance. In this case with Hulk, it was both. So I was so in love with the art. It made me feel like these were iconic characters. They weren't goofy characters like how I'd seen the old Spider-Man cartoon from the 60s where he's swinging uh, from the sky and his webs are just connecting to air. These portraits, these paintings made me feel like these are iconic characters that I need to learn more about. And the set did just that. It gave you a window into where you can find out more about these characters. This is numbered 1225 out of 2000. Awesome metal card of the Hulk. All right, and then they have these bronze, thick, heavy metal cards. So these are both Psylocke. Here you can see on the back, again, her first US appearance in New Mutants Annual 2. I would go into the comic shop to try to look for this issue, and that's when I found out what key issues were and how they were expensive. But as you can see, FPG, these do not look, uh, do not look numbered. But I'm guessing this zombie thing is some kind of variant that FPG does. I don't know. They're slightly different looking, but I, I just think that's how they came off of the print. But metal plate, Psylocke, I got two of those. And then I got one Spider-Man, which might be my favorite card out of the set. I don't know. It's hard to really pick one. But again, this is the one that I have the poster of. I loved how he was sitting in the web. It made Spider-Man look dark to me. Like He's always been this happy-go-lucky, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, but him on this web... I don't know, it was like a dark, eerie vibe for Spider-Man with the black background in the creepy webs. But that's the third of the metal cards. Of the bronze, I guess I should say. All right, so let's take a look at the smaller book first, and then we'll get into the big dog. So here we go. Joe Jusko's art of the 1992 Marvel masterpieces. I dig seeing these cards in a different light for the first time with the background removed. So here is the spine. You can see you got Spider-Man cropped out, FPG, Marvel. And the back here has more of those iconic cards with Vision, which I guess, was this a Lost card? Is it part of the Lost card set? Or this might have been printed in the 93 set. Either way, oh, can't grab it. Let's take a look. Black cover pages. Here we have some credits. And then we have the man, Jusko himself, drawing Richard Ryder Nova. So, Joe Jusko put the Marvel in the Marvel Masterpieces. The past 30 plus years have shown the unique historical significance of the 92 Marvel Masterpiece trading card series. To this day, it reigns supreme in the hearts and minds of legions of Marvel fans worldwide, myself included, as evident by the unprecedented 350,000 boxes sold which is why they don't hold value. There were so many of them that were produced. That's not packs, that's not cards, that's boxes, which each box, you really are getting the entire set. We weren't trying to repeat that monumental experience with a brand new art book that collects all of Joe Jusko's beloved 1992 paintings, but we did believe that a very important homage could be paid to the series if Joe would recreate each piece at the same size of his original painting. So we proposed a plan to paint for Joe to paint 124 all new renditions of his Marvel Masterpieces paintings to be offered as part of a very limited edition of the art book. Being the ultimate good guy, Joe understood what we what doing this would mean for the fans, and he happily, no, make that enthusiastically agreed to do it. So hold on, what are we saying? So all of these paintings, are they saying that these are recreations of the paintings he did for the original set? Once the new original paintings were completed and laid out in front of us, it was obvious that they simply must be published in some type of book to allow as many people as possible to enjoy seeing them. 
Bingo! The idea to collect all of them in a high quality limited edition digest was born. That's what you now hold in your hands. We thank Joe for his dedication in creating each of these 124 wonderful 2022-2023 paintings. It makes for a truly magical little digest. Thanks so much for joining us on this incredible journey. Wow, so I didn't realize that these were recreations. This book is a, a celebration of the 92 set. We have presented the character paintings in the order that they appeared in publication. So here's Blob with no background. Wow, so these were repainted. All right, so let's see if we can see the differences from his 92 Blob to 2022. So 30 years later, it looks almost identical. So the original blob had kind of a, a motion of the ball, the cannonball going into his stomach. Wow, that looks like he he pretty much recreated that exactly, right? The shadowing on the hair looks a little bit different. I guess the colors might look a little different. Wow, that is like eerily similar. All right, so we've got blob. Johnny Blaze, Black Widow. It's very cool with the white background. All right, let's do another comparison here. So you've got Black Cat. Yeah, the face looks different. So she's kind of looking off to the side a little bit. And the original, this one, she's kind of looking forward. It looks pretty similar. The building is a little bit different here. It's not as detailed. Wow, okay. I didn't realize that was that's what was going on here. I mean, it probably said it in the campaign, but I didn't notice it. So you got Bishop. They look almost exactly the same, though. Beast, the Archangel. Always love the Archangel painting. Apocalypse here. Adam Warlock. Dark Hawk. We really need a Dark Hawk omnibus. That iconic Cyclops. You got Daredevil, Colossus, Captain Britain, Captain America, Luke Cage, Cable, Bullseye. You've got Dazzler, the Enchantress. This was always an iconic one for me, too, with Electro, Electra, Strange, and Doc Ock, the two Doctors, followed by the third, uh, Dormammu, Gambit. You have your Deathlock, Galactus, Human Torch, again, one of my favorite cards. It's weird to see it with the white background. Up oh, the Hulk, so compared to the card here. Man, this dude pretty much, re it's almost identical. Like, yo, if I didn't read that, I would have thought that these were just photoshopped versions of the original one. Hawkeye have it. Ghost Rider was another one of my favorites. I actually didn't like the Green Goblin background, how it was just the Spider-Man mask. Iron Man with Invisible Woman. Iceman with the Lizard. You got the leader, Kingpin. That's your boy, Jem. Kang, Juggernaut. Jean Grey, Mandarin. I cannot believe how similar these look. Major Victory, Magneto, Loki. You got Moon Knight, Mole Man and Mojo. See that sewn binding? So I guess, yeah, they had him recreate it, and then they decide to publish this small little book. We'll have to see what the what's in the big book. Now I don't even know. Mephisto with Megan, Amorita, and Namor. Mr. Sinister with Mr. Fantastic. Morbius and Nightmare. Nightcrawler with Night Thrasher. Nick Fury with Psylocke. Again, one of my favorite cards. Black background card. Professor X with the Phoenix. You've got Nova here. See, now it makes sense that we see him doing that painting right here. I'm surprised they got him to do this, man. Because, you know, seeing his interviews regarding the first 92 set, he was under, like, a lot of time constraints, and it was not an easy task to paint this whole entire set by himself. I mean, it's probably why you never saw him do another solo one uh, for Marvel. Quasar, Punisher. His Punisher card is goaded. The Shatterstar with Shadow Cat, Sauron, and Sandman. Sabretooth and Rogue. So if you want to know what Jusko was doing <laughs> between 2022 and 2023, this is what he was doing. Red Skull and Silver Sable, She-Hulk and Thanos. I always thought it was weird how he had the planets by his feet. Super Scroll. Bro, so many of these characters I know because of this set. Strong Guy. Oh, look at the Spider-Man with Storm here. It's so crazy to see these with white backgrounds. 
Sleepwalker and Speedball. Some of these he couldn't get out of it. You basically had to do the entire card. Silver Surfer, again, on the white is crazy. Thor and Wonder Man. His Wolverine, he always liked that maskless, feral-looking Wolverine with the whited-out eyes. Emma Frost, his Weapon Omega, and his Venom. Venom looks a little bit different. Ultron, Tombstone. So this is what blew my mind as a kid right here, guys. When I saw this card in real life, at the time, I had only seen the regular cards from the regular packs, and they were all one character. And then someone on the playground in elementary school had this card. And I was like, what? A bonus card? It's two characters? It's Wolverine versus Sabretooth? I, I love this image so much. And then I love all of them. The Thing versus Hulk. The Surfer versus Thanos. Spider-Man versus Venom. I mean, come on. Here it is next to the original. Dude, it looks so similar. So he changed the eyes a little bit. I never really noticed his foot like that, I guess. And it was so cool seeing them fight in the sewers. I was a TMNT kid at the time. And then you had Cat vs. Red Skull. Some of his 2099 characters. I feel like these weren't in the 92 set, though. Or they might have been the Lost Cards. I think Strife and Domino were the Lost Cards. Vision, War Machine. Nah, Carnage, Doom 2099. Some of these they used for the 93 Marvel set. Iron Fist was in 93, I believe. We, we, we took a look at those cards recently. You got Thunderstrike. So he did more than just the 92 set. I guess he did all of these at the same time, and they just didn't use them all for the 92 set. Deadpool wasn't in there. Jubilee was part of the Lost Cards, which were only available. The five Lost Cards were in the tin is the only way you can get those. Forge, Cyber, Deathbird, Cannonball, Feral, and ooh, Spider-Man 2099, one of my favorites. So yeah, he did 124. There's only 94, 104 cards in the set. Well, I guess 109 with the lost cards, but wow. So that's everything in this smaller book. Let's take a look at the big boy. And here we go, the originals. Again, I just love seeing these laid out this way because you only get to see them in the binder. That was kind of my inspiration for framing the set. I want to see what all the cards look at at once together. And this slipcase is such a great representation of that. It wraps around to the side. Here goes that goblin. It wraps around on the back, even on the top and on the bottom. I love the slipcase, guys. Awesome job on that. Then you've got the dust jacket. Spider-Man, what's going on here? You got kind of like a box in the background. Signed and numbered edition. We just saw this. And then here we have the back. So again, man, cropped out. Here's the original packs, super classy. 30 years ago, a trading card series was released that would forever change the non-sport card community. The 1992 Marvel Masterpieces. Look, $325 is the cover price they put here for the signed and numbered edition. It took an unprecedented 350,000 boxes to quench the thirst of card collectors worldwide. Nothing like it had been seen before, nor has it since. This series would not have become the mon uh, monumental success that it did had artist Joe Jusco not produced 104 mind-boggling paintings. Joe literally set the standard for all of the Marvel Masterpieces series that were to follow. None of them lived up to it. The only one that's even close to me is the 96 set. Iconic portrayals of the great Marvel characters. These cards hold a very special place in the hearts of collectors of all ages. FPG presents a long overdue celebration of his renowned series featuring the 104 card paintings at the size they were created, along with their pencil prelims seen for the first time and the five lost ladies card paintings. So the lost cards were all ladies. Also included is a walk with Joe through the history of how the series came to be. You don't want to miss it. Dang. All right, so let's take off the dust jacket. This video is going to be long, guys, but... This is 92 Marvel Masterpiece. It's the Catalina Wine Mixer, y'all. All right, so inside of the dust jacket, you have images of the cards. Again, like you don't typically see them. You see them in a nine-card sleeve, and that's about it, or one at a time, but very rarely do you get to see images like that. I think it looks incredible. All right, so the actual hardcover, same as the dust jacket. Yeah, everything is the same. Ooh-wee. So you got the thing, again, 
cropped from the Thing vs. Hulk card, signed by Joe Jusco in gold ink that matches exactly here, and it's 156 out of just 500 made on the signed and numbered edition. Wow. Opens up to some white cover pages. Again, that Spider-Man card might be my favorite. This book is dedicated to every single person that found a little bit of magic through these trading cards 30 years ago. Here's to hoping that you discover or rediscover that magic in this book. Dang. Forward by Dan Dos Santos. Marvel Memories by Joe. We've got Making the Masterpieces Part 1 and 2. An interview with a Marvel Masterpiece and the Marvel Masterpieces painting. So look at the prelims all in the background here. Look at Spider-Man. He came out way different. So a forward by Dan Dos Santos. He says, be careful. What you're holding right now is not just a book. It's my childhood, my catalyst, my artistic aspirations in printed form. And I know I'm not alone when I say this. You're not, bro. I feel the same way. Um, I kind of feel like I don't want to read the whole entire book for you guys. That might be a little bit boring. And, you know, it might, I don't know, prevent somebody from wanting to go out and get it itself. But look, talking about trading cards. So Joe did covers for the Savage Sword of Conan 69 and 143. I was such a fan of Jusco uh, that I would go back and hunt down other trading cards that he did. Oh, look at this. One of Joe's cosmic background paintings from the 92 Marvel Masterpiece Series 3. I did not even know he did that. And I knew that they all connected from being in the sleeves. Wow. Okay. Here goes the box for the Marvel Masterpieces and the packs. Yo, they were just so classy, man. Talking about the deadline. Here is the, the same image, the poster that I have. Yeah, man, what a great poster. They picked this. See, look, that marble kind of look on the logo. Some of the best cards here on the side. Yep, this was inside of or on the back of comic books. In the 90s, you would see that on the back. Oh, look at Joe Jusco in his Marvel Masterpieces tour badge. Can't wait to read this. Yeah, so here's the comics. This is the comic I, I've shown you guys. I have two sets of all of these. I got to find where they are. I think I have one set that's in better condition that's bagged and boarded. And then I have like a reader set. But again, you only had the small trading cards. And this was like the first time you got these oversized images of these paintings. Actually, I think I had this issue CGC'd at one time because, it, again, it was like one of my favorite pieces of comic book artwork. Spider-Man 2099, it was featured on the display box for the 93 Marvel Masterpiece. So, again, they took some of those paintings and used them for later series. Here's the 10 that I'm talking about. It's the only way you can get those five Lost Ladies cards. Again, I didn't even realize that they were Lost Ladies. Also, look at this. Just go Y2K1. So, I guess he redid this image. Uh, yeah, he recreated that for a variant. I've seen that image before. Here we go. I like that as well. This is the uncut sheet. I don't have an. Un I never had an uncut sheet. I've had uncut sheets of other trading cards in the past, but here's a here's one from the '92 set. Oh, and the back, the uncut sheet, bro. This back, th this right here, y'all. This got me into comics. This showed me where to go look for him. Isn't that crazy? Making of the Marvel Masterpieces. So some old Marvel Age articles. Wow, look at these with different trims. A look, at, a look at how the design of the cards, fronts and backs evolved during the production process. Yeah, I like how they ended off. Yo, the, the Human Torch one, such a great card. All right, so you get more of that. Yeah, a lot of great bonus material. I can't wait to read all this stuff. An interview with a Marvel masterpiece. And then here we have the painting. So you have a table of contents. Yeah, so here's the lost cards. Here's the uh, bonus cards. And here we go, the blob. So again, this is the same size. So if people want to complain, why is there a border? Why is this the size of the book? That's why. So you get a little blurb from Joe before each card and you get the prelim. So we're not going to go through everything because this video is already long enough as it is. But look, this image was all mood and attitude. 
So he's got Blaze here, the Black Widow. Look, I was crazy about this verse. I want to read all these, but it's like, I don't want to make this too long. The Black Panther. And sometimes he'll tell you, I didn't like this card. I didn't like how this painting came out. Bishop coming out of the portal. This is essentially what we're getting with the new Sideshow statue. Beast. Feels like the XM statue. This isn't like the version of Beast that I like. Not super nerdy, super scientist. He's getting down. He's fighting some kind of weird machinery. The Archangel. Little plane there. Picking which characters to show in a close-up was sometimes a tough decision, but a cropped-in shot seemed the most imposing for Apocalypse. So a little explanation of how they came along. Great Warlock card. And here's Dark Hawk. So these are the originals, bro. Some bigger than others. I'm not sure why I chose a spacey backdrop for this painting, but it was probably because it was fast and dramatic. See, again, there was a big time crunch here. So he'll kind of explain why some things look the way that they were. I wasn't an avid Excalibur reader, so a generic strong pose and Union Jack were easy choices for a dramatic portrayal. Yeah, see, that's kind of like me. Like, I don't know a lot about Excalibur, but he had to paint the character. Cap, he, he went out of his way to do a, a bald eagle and American flag. Always liked the dynamic Luke Cage punch, punching through the uh, brick wall. Table here. Probably not the strongest concept for the character, but it puts the big guns thing across, though not to the extreme as in the comic books. See? He's very honest in his descriptions. I feel like, I don't know if th these are new blurbs from him or if it's, um, yeah, I guess they must be new blurbs. Because the, the stuff that he has in those comics is, uh, oh, you know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking about like the 2016 or 2018 set. I always forget. He has similar type of blurbs. Uh, like he has here. A favorite from these series. I think I caught her attitude pretty well. I was intending to have her twirling the sigh, but I was so cognizant of how much time I was spending on each card that I let that go. See, interesting um, insight into these cards here. The prelim, just a rough sketch. This was always a dope card. I, I feel like it made Electro feel very imposing to me. Doctor Strange explains why he did a close-up. Love the depiction of... Um, Doc Ock. Dr. Doom, I never really liked this one. He tried to do another kind of close-up shot, he says. The Dormammu, another bad guy close-up. Deathlock. This was a great card, too. The purple background with the green explosion coming from the guns. Gambit, close-up. He did a great job on Gambit. The black and red eyes, the cigarette, the bow staff. Always like this Galactus, seeing like different beings, him destroying a planet, showing his whole kind of like lore in one picture. This character is a pain to draw, but it's satisfying when he's done. I guess all the intricacies of the outfit, the little aliens make it for me. Yeah, me too. It really gives you scale. Amazing card. Simple and effective. I remember reading an article many years back in which Boris Vallejo stated that the red never looks redder than when it's p uh, placed next to black. And I'll be damned if he wasn't right. I'm glad to see he's a fan of Boris, too, because I like my favorite painters are like just go Boris Vallejo, Julie Bell. And then you get in, you know, Alex Ross, Gabriel Del Otto, uh, Addy Granov. One of my personal top five cards in this series. I agree. I think it's a perfect little origin depiction and a really formidable looking Hulk. I did an 18 by 24 recreation for someone over 20 years ago and haven't seen it since. But another one, yeah, you get the whole lore in just one card. Always love this card. Damn, look at the original. He wanted to shave time by not having to paint the full figure with the glider and uh, I was always making up time wherever possible. See, that's something that you would never really know as a kid just looking at these cards. Yeah, he likes this version of Hawkeye. Me too. Havoc was a great card, man. Not a great painting. I disagree. I love this one. Look at the rage in his eyes showing off his powers, which is very hard to convey. Who doesn't love painting the Green Goblin? Next to Spider-Man, he's probably Ditko's most revered creation and character design, humorous and terrifying at the same time. I just didn't love the background on this. Bro, Ghost Rider is a crazy card. This is this character is Mike Plug's original and extremely popular creation. I absolutely hate painting tech of any kind, so it was I was dreading the motorcycle, but luckily by this point it was an all black solid hunk of metal. So I guess it's Danny Ketch, 90s Ghost Rider. 
We need a statue of that, bro. Iron Man. I always felt like he took the easy way out with this card. <laughs> he really didn't have to draw much. And I think he says he doesn't really like about uh, painting tech. Yeah, I hate painting that armor, which has become more and more complicated. Yeah, and he references the 2016 Marvel Masterpieces. We did a video on that book while we were waiting for this one to come. Like this one. It's kind of like statues. If you can do a painting showcasing the powers, you're doing it good. Again, he made Beast. He made Iceman look menacing. Well, not menacing. Formidable. The Lizard. The Leader. It's always kind of like a... <laughs> very like Masters of the Universe feeling. The Kingpin with the cigar and the jewelry and the gem on the cane. I may be wrong, but I think this may be the first ever painted version of Kingpin. Damn, I love it. New York in the background on that nice desk this was kind of a weird king the conqueror oh he wanted to do time at first huh he didn't end up doing it juggernaut not my favorite juggernaut yeah certainly not the best drawn figure but the over exaggeration works with the character yeah it was a weird one kind of a weird pose Jean Grey the Mandarin not the version of the character I grew up with or wanted to paint but the one that lent itself to an eye catching card Major Victory. This is how I first heard of Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I've never heard of this guy, but I loved painting Captain America. This was a fun image. He lowered the shield from the sketch. Magneto. The dumbest thing I did in this series was have Magneto get pissed off in a Home Depot. I honestly have no idea what I was thinking. Made yourself paint a bunch of small tools. The Loki, another evil close-up. Moon Knight was pretty cool. Mole man with all his moles everywhere. Uh, this piece, uh, this was the piece that made him realize submitting sketches was a bad idea. <laughs> all right, then we got Mojo. I knew, you know, I would later find out more about Mojo from the animated series. Mephisto looks menacing. Megan, again, although not a huge Excalibur reader, I did get the book because I liked Alan Davis's art and I love the character design. Adding Stonehenge as a nod to her background seemed appropriate. I don't think I've ever realized that Stonehenge was in the background. Namorita is one of his favorite cards, if not the favorite. That's crazy. I love the Dolphin story by J. Scott Pike in DC Comics Showcase 79 when I was a kid. I, I have really haven't heard of Namorita before or after this set. Then you got Namor underwater. I, I kind of dug that card. Mr. Sinister was pretty cool. As in the movies, the bad guys are always more fun to portray. Mr. Fantastic. I always like this card. Morbius was cool. Again, at this time, I think shortly after you know seeing these cards, I would get into the Spider-Man animated series, the X-Men animated series. So it was cool to see characters that I, have, I had already knew from this set. Nightmare. I threw as much Steve Ditko into this one as possible with, the, with his realm in the back. I like Nightcrawler showing the Banff. What else can he say? You got the Night Thrasher running on the rooftops. Nick Fury is an homage to Dirty Harry. Got the cigar going. Psylocke, without a doubt. This is the most popular card in the series, no question. I didn't notice until years later that I forgot the sash ties coming off her waist. No one has ever mentioned that. So he forgot to do the sash, I guess, yeah. It's, it's right here, behind her legs. Professor X, what do you do with a guy in a wheelchair, even one that hovers? I had to ask... That production stripped the words danger room into the red box, but it got overlooked. So the context of this piece isn't really clear. So it was supposed to say danger room there. You got Phoenix. The final pose is more feminine and yet still powerful. She was supposed to have like an X pose. Here goes Nova. Cool costume design. I love the blue and gold costumes. I, th I thought this was a cool one. North Star. I, wasn't, I was never familiar with the character. I think he's part of Alpha Flight, no? Yeah, this was always a weird one for me. He had Nomad as a wanted poster. I guess because the sketch was boring, he said. The wanted idea came at the last minute. Quicksilver. He says it didn't match the concept. Kind of. Quasar. He looks like a 1960s bubblegum pop star who became a superhero. The airbrushed halo works well to spotlight him on the card. Quasar was always so lame to me. <laughs> Bro, the Punisher card is crazy. <laughs> Look, this was the original sketch, and this is what he ended up doing. I was my own worst enemy when it came to taking what have, would have been a fairly simple painting and making them three times harder. 
The original sketch would probably have made a more impactful card too. But I love how realistic this looks. He's literally hanging out the window of some building. Well, he's out of the window on the ledge in New York. Shatterstar, he says, as Jim Lee slash Rob Liefeld opposed as I could muster. Yeah, right? Very action-packed. Shatterstar coming through the wall. Or Shadow Cat, I should say. Thought that was cool as a kid. Sauron. Yo, Dinosaurs was like my first love. Love Jurassic Park. Sauron was always a cool character. Much different from the sketch. Saber. Oh. Sandman at the beach. This is funny. Sabretooth was one of my favorite cards too, man. He said, this was the only painting in the series that I started over after getting about halfway through, but I cannot for the life of me remember why. For whatever reason, I think the final painting came out as well as it could have, so I guess I knew what I was doing. This is an incredible painting. This rogue's a bit boring. Red School, pretty cool. Very Masters of the Universe. Skeletor vibes. Silver Sable. Pretty cool. He gave a little ass shot for y'all. She-Hulk destroying some type of... Yeah, sexy, powerful, and a, with a bit of whimsy, defeat some type of robot. Here's Thanos. Still cool painting. It's weird. He's got the planets everywhere, right? Super Scroll, a really fun piece to paint. Aside from a few figure modifications uh, to better fill the space, I stay close to my original intent. Strong guy. Okay, so, oh, um, okay, man. The X Men has some truly bizarre characters pop up over the years. I got nothing. First time of me ever learning of Strong Guy. Storm card is a masterpiece, bro. I like the mood in the palette. Yeah, man. Waves crashing. This was the very first very first character I painted. It became the iconic image of the series. It's a fairly creepy depiction that far afield from the John Romita version I grew up with, but it definitely struck a chord with fans, slightly altered from the original sketch, but to a better effect. Isn't that funny? That's kind of what I was saying when I was talking uh, about it earlier, how it... It wasn't your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. It gave a creepy vibe to him. Speedball. I recently had someone tell me this was my favorite image from the series. I never heard that before. Sleepwalker. I would end up reading Sleepwalker because of this. His surfer is pretty cool. Oh, on the new one he made, he kind of gave him a trail. The Thing. This was like a... I feel like doing this much of a close-up was an easy way out. Thor, I always thought this was kind of a funny one, but yeah, the Rainbow, uh, Rainbow Bridge, Asgard in the galaxy. He slightly tilted it from the sketch. Wonder Man, never really was a fan. Wolverine, could this be the most insanely feral Wolverine ever? Maybe, maybe not, but he's sure in need of a good hair conditioner. Yeah, I told you, he always seemed to like to draw him without the mask on. He did one a couple years ago as an exclusive variant, which was really good. But I think even his Wolverine vs. Sabretooth, he's maskless here. He always reminded me of a werewolf in this picture. But I always loved the Wolverine costume, how the, the boots were pointy, his hair was pointy, the mask was pointy, his fists are pointy. Emma Frost. Yeah, he did a crazy detailed background on this. He really just pictured the Hellfire Club. Weapon Omega, another character I was never really familiar with. Venom. Not as horrifying or monstrous as later renditions are, but it was the comic version at the time. Yeah, it was like the McFarlane version. Uh, was the tongue a thing yet in 1992? If it was, I'm not sure how I could have missed it. Yeah, I feel like Larson really gave him the tongue thing. Then he got Ultron. Tombstone was a cool character. He changed a lot from the original he was going to do. And then you have the bonus cards. Thing vs. Hulk. Again, look how they took this painting and they cropped out the thing for the beginning. So cool. The meetings between these two going all the way back to Fantastic Four 12, which I just recently read, are legendary. It is the most revered rivalry between heroes in the Marvel Universe. I couldn't wait to paint this image and it's easily my favorite of the battled paintings. I tried like hell to change this to a Surfer versus Mephisto car, but I couldn't get them being Marvel to budge. It's an okay painting, but definitely not the one I wanted to do. I love this one. And these cards had like a little bit of shine to it. So the outline on Thanos looks great. All right, see, look, he originally looks like he was going to do a mask, maybe. An up-close, in-your-face dogfight befitting the ferocity of the two antagonists, the most popular of these chase cards paintings amongst fans. Hell yeah. 
And it's weird how that's true, but for me, it's because it's the first time I saw a battle card from this set. Oh, look at how Spider-Man was originally facing the other way. Then you got the iconic Cat vs. Red Skull. And then the Lost... What's the LM? I thought it was Lost Cards. But yeah, they were all women. They were Scarlet Witch, Feral. He, he channeled his inner Mar Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, they were all women. Death Bird, Typhoid Mary. Probably his favorite card from the Extras. And then Jubilee. Wow, and that's how it... Oh, and it ends with the Hulk version from that. Signed by Joe Jusco. This is a book I will keep forever, man. Wow. Finally here after, what is it, almost two years in the making. Let me know what you guys think about the Joe Jusco 1992 Marvel Masterpiece Kickstarter hardcover slipcase. Thanks for watching, you guys. Stay minty fresh. Peace.